All right, guys, so here we have a power cycle scribed onto a PV diagram. We have volume on the X, pressure on the Y, and we're told a couple of things. So we're told that from 1 to 2, we have 15 kilojoules of internal energy. From process 3 to 1, we have uh, 10 kilojoules of heat transfer. And then we're going to have to look for the work for each process, the heat transfer of each process, as well as the thermal efficiency for the whole power cycle. So to tabulate everything here between both the states and the processes, I made a couple of tables here. So the bottom one is going to tabulate each state on this PV diagram. So at state one, we have a volume of one meter cubed and a pressure of five um, kilopascals. So we're gonna have one and five. And then likewise at state two, we're going to have five and three. And at state three, we're going to have one and one. Now from the problem statement, we're told that from one to two, we have a change in internal energy of 15 kilojoules. And then from process three to one, we have a uh, heat transfer of 10 kilojoules. So now let's begin by finding all of our unknowns and we're gonna start with process one to two. Remember that the work is found using the formula of the integral from V1 to V2, P dV, and V is volume and P is pressure. Now in this instance, you don't have a constant pressure because you have five kilopascals at state one and three kilopascals at state two. So what you're gonna have to do is find the area under the curve, or in other words, you have to find the formula of this line, which we're going to do in a minute. So remember that you're going to find that in y equals mx plus b form. In other words, slope intercept form. So in this instance, the y is going to be the pressure, the x is going to be the volume, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So first, let's find the m, so the slope. So remember that just m or slope is going to be equal to rise over run, so it's going to be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So remember, like I said, y is going to be the pressure. So we're going to have a 3 minus 5 on top and a 5 minus 1 on the bottom. And this should net you a slope of negative 2 over 4, which is going to be negative 1 over 2. Now to find the b value, all you have to do is plug in the slope into the y equals mx plus b equation. You'll have y equals negative 1 over 2 x plus b. And then plug in one coordinate that you have, which is going to be 1, 5, which is your state 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to have 5 equals negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus b. And then you just have to isolate for b, and you'll have b equals 5 and a half, or in other words, b equals 11 over 2. So that means that ultimately the formula of this line is going to be pressure equals negative 1 over 2 v plus 11 over 2. So now we can use that in our formula for the work. So we can set this equal to the integral from volume one to volume two. And then like we said, pressure is gonna be equal to negative one over two V plus 11 over two. And all of that is going to be in respect to the volume. Next thing we're going to have to do is integrate this formula for the pressure. You just integrate the pressure and you'll have V squared, negative one over four V squared, plus 11 over 2 v evaluated from v2 to v1. So I went ahead and just evaluated this integral since it's just some basic calculus. And when you do evaluate it, you'll end up with 16 kilojoules for work 1 to 2. So let's go ahead and fill that in right up here. So now that we found the work for process 1 to 2 using the mathematical formula, let's go ahead and do the same thing except using the analytical method from the graph. So remember that the work is just equal to area under the curve. So if you look at this orange curve from line one to two, so from here all the way to here, and you just draw a vertical line, the x-axis off of each one, pretty much what you're going to look for is this whole entire shaded area here. So because it's a semi-odd shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into two different shapes. So I'm going to divide it into a rectangle and a triangle right about here. So notice this triangle up top is going to have a base of 2 and a height of 4. So I guess the height would be this red line, uh, the red line being 4. So that means that the area is going to be 2 times 4 divided by 2, area of a triangle, and that's going to be equal to 4. 
And then on the bottom here, you just have a rectangle, which is going to be a four on the base by a, looks like a three on the height. So that's going to be 12. So this entire thing is 12. And last but not least, notice that this arrow here is pointing to the right for process one to two, which just indicates that the work is going to be positive. So you have a positive four plus 12, which is going to equal positive 16. And as you can see, we have a positive 16 for our work. All right, I'm just gonna clean slate it here just to keep things a little bit more neat. So now we have to find the heat transfer for process one to two. That's pretty easy. Just remember you apply the first law of thermodynamics, which just states that the change in internal energy from one to two is going to be equal to the heat transfer from one to two minus the work from one to two. So we have 15 is gonna be equal to Q12 minus 16. Obviously you just add 16 and you'll have Q12 equals 31 kilojoules. So we'll have 31 here, and now process 1 to 2 is complete. Now if we look at process 2 to 3, it's going to be the same deal. We're going to need the equation of this line in y equals mx plus b form, or slope-intercept form. So to do that, we're going to first find the slope. So we're going to find m, which is going to equal, uh, it's going to be y3, I guess. We'll uh, write it out with these variables first. So y3 minus y2 over x3 minus x2. So if you look at the chart here, you're going to have the y3 equals 1 and the y2 equals 3. So you have 1 minus 3 on top. And then on the bottom, you're going to have 1 minus 5. And so that's going to be 1 minus 5, which is going to give you negative 2 over negative 4. So the slope in this instance is a 1 over 2 positive slope. So now this yields the equation y equals 1 over 2x plus b. So to find b, we're just going to plug in, I guess, state 3, since it looks like it's a lot easier. So we'll have 1 equals 1 over 2 times 1 plus b. And then if you solve for b, you're going to have that b equals 1 over 2. So this gives you the formula for this line of pressure equals the slope 1 over 2 times the volume plus the uh, slope intercept or the y-intercept, sorry, which is b, 1 over 2. Now, if we write out our work formula for 2 to 3, so we'll have state 2 to 3 equals volume 2 to volume 3, pdv, and then this can be rewritten as the slope, or sorry, the integral from v2 to v3, and then your pressure equation was 1 over 2, v plus 1 over 2 close the bracket, and that's to be integrated with respect to dv. So now you just evaluate this integral here, and you'll have 1 over 4 v squared plus 1 over 2 v, and you're going to have to evaluate this entire thing at v3, which is 1 meter, and v2, which is 5 meters. And when you finish evaluating this integral here, and you plug in your numbers, you're going to find that the work from 2 to 3 equals 8, negative 8 kilojoules. And this makes sense because, as you can see on this PV diagram, Process 2 to 3 is moving to the left, and if it moves to the left, that means you have a negative work. So now let's analytically find the work from 2 to 3 in case if you didn't feel like using this formula. So again, draw a line from the bottom from either point, 2 and 3, and then you're going to shade under the curve. So once again, you can see that this is actually kind of like an irregular shape, so I'm going to go ahead and divide it once again. And as you can see, you have a triangle and a rectangle. So this triangle here is a one by four. So that means that the area of the rectangle on the bottom is just four. And then up top, you have a triangle, which is looking like it is a two on the right side by a four in length. So again, base times height of a triangle, two times four is eight divided by two, and you're gonna have four. So now if we take the sum of these two areas, we have 4 and 4, which once again gives us 8. And we know it's negative because the arrow on the 2 to 3 process points to the left. So we'll fill it in on the table up here. We have negative 8 kilojoules. And now we'd want to find the heat transfer for process, one, uh, process 2 to 3, but it doesn't look like it's possible because we have an unknown delta U here. So we can't really use this first law of thermodynamics over process 2 to 3 just yet. However, if we look further into this PV diagram, notice that process 3 to 1 has a vertical 
volume. So in other words, if you were to use the formula for for work here, you'd have work equals zero because you'd have the same volume here minus the same volume here, and it would give you zero, as well as the fact that it's a vertical line, which means that there is no there is no area under this line. So where you can zero out the work for three to one. And as a result, because now you have three numbers here, you have uh, one to two, two to three, three to one, you have all the processes and now you can find the cycle work. So the cycle work is just the summation of that column. So 16 plus negative eight plus zero, you're gonna have eight. And remember an assumption for any given process. If a process goes back to its original state, so from three all the way back to one, that means that the change in net energy must be equal to zero. So you have zero for your delta U. And now if we apply the first law of thermodynamics over the cycle, so we'll have delta U for the cycle is equal to the heat transfer for the cycle minus the work for the cycle. We're going to have zero equals Q cycle minus eight. And you'll have the QC cycle equals eight kilojoules. So we can fill that in right over here. And that makes sense because for any given cycle, you should have the work and the heat transfer being equal. And now notice that in the vertical column for heat transfer right over here, the there's only one missing, which is process two to three. So let's do a summation of all of that. So we'll have QC equals Q12 plus Q23 plus Q31. We'll have eight equals 31 plus Q23 plus 10. Now just solve for Q23 and you're going to have negative 33 kilojoules. Negative 33 kilojoules. Now we can apply the first law of thermodynamics to process 2 to 3. I'll do it in the bottom left-hand corner here. So we'll have delta U to 3 equals Q to 3 minus W to 3. Delta U 3 equals negative 33 minus negative 8. You'll have neg uh, delta U23 equals negative 25 kilojoules. Negative 25. Now let's apply the first law of thermodynamics over 3 to 1. So we'll have delta U31 equals Q31 minus W31. So we don't have delta U in this instance. So we'll have U31 equals 10 minus uh, w is actually going to be zero. So we're gonna have u31 is going to just be equal to 10. So we'll fill that in here, a positive 10. And let's verify that this makes sense. So if we have 15 minus 25 is gonna give you positive 10, or sorry, negative 10. And then if you add a positive 10 to the negative 10, it's gonna give you zero. And if you apply the first law of thermodynamics over the cycle of delta U is equal to Q minus W, you'd have zero equals eight minus eight, so it is all correct. And now last but not least, we're looking for the thermal efficiency. So remember thermal efficiency of a power cycle can be written as the cycle work divided by the Q in or total heat transfers coming in. So let's see what we have here. So for our cycle work, we simply have eight kilojoules. So we'll fill in eight kilojoules. In our Q in, so we have a 31 over here and we have a 10 over here. You don't want to use your cycle or your net heat transfer. You want to use the summation of your Q ins or your positive Qs. So we'll have, we'll have 31 plus 10, we'll have 41 on the numerator here, sorry, denominator, and this will divide into 0 0.195 or 19.5%.